So when he says this, I just laugh. And then he says, you know what? I'm, we're going to get lawyers involved. And I just roll my eyes. I'm like, really? Really? My question is, how are you going to pay a lawyer if you can't even pay me? I'm just, I'm just curious how that's going to work. Two, what are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell them? Oh, hey, yeah, there's this one time I delayed his payment and without telling him, there's this one time, there's a whole month I didn't pay him. Here's a contract that we signed about a salary, but hey, is there a way we could finesse this? Like, bro, what are you going to tell them to justify your actions? I have messages. I have it. And if you delete your messages, that shows even more that you're having, you're trying to hide something, man. Like there's nothing you can do. What do you, when you walk into a lawyer's office and you explain the situation to them, what are you going to tell them to justify trying to sue me for anything? Happy, happy new year's guys. You guys, I hope you guys like my little backdrop. Welcome to the channel, dummy Co's, where we talk about everything in this case bad things also before this video starts man support this channel if you can like and comment and anything you could do i really appreciate y'all so much man yeah i had to say this i'm at the end of the video but i have to cut this and put it at the front because you know i forget 12 13 15 years on youtube i forget this stuff so listen I'm trying to go into this new year with a positive attitude. I'm sure all of you are. But I have one lingering story to tell. You know, I have to. I told it on my live a couple of days ago, but I figured for the main channel, for the people who don't want to watch me ramble for an hour, here is the video. If you guys have watched my last video about the situation, um, basically owed money for doing work or being a salaried employee and they're just deciding not to pay me and now there's an update to this story. I have an old video on this story before. Go ahead and check it out. But this is just a follow-up because I finally got a response. Before we really get into it, I want to make sure you guys understand if you're an employer out there, please understand I do not want to work for you if you for some reason see me talking about the situation as a bad or unprofessional thing. The way I have been treated, the way this has been handled was very unprofessional and not on my side, by the way, till I have yet to give out names. I've yet to give out a company name. I'm just talking about my personal experience with evidence. <laughs> so if you find this toxic behavior, okay, just leave. Also, if you want to support this channel, go ahead, like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Appreciate it. Man. So after I released my last video, what <laughs> transpired was something interesting. As you guys know, they were not responding to me. They were taking like a week or a couple of days at a time to respond. And when they finally did respond, they were very vague and not directly answering my questions. Obviously, after I finally uploaded that video, all of a sudden I get 15 or 14 messages from them talking about this and that, trying to defend themselves, right? I don't open these messages for... I don't know how long. Keep in mind, I, I I didn't hear from them since the last conversation we had about whatever. You know, th I didn't hear from them for like a week or two, and I'm double texting everything, nothing. Obviously, as soon as this video comes out, now they got time to talk to me, right? So they're over here trying to defend themselves. I I look at these messages. Keep in mind, in my mind, I'm, I just don't see myself ever getting this money. You know, I'm just like, whatever. So I don't even rush to open these messages because, again, it's going to be some more manipulative talk and trying to justify whatever negative action without ever taking any responsibility. Then one day after like a week of these messages being my phone, I open them and he's very obviously defending himself. Everything that I just said was right. Defending himself with no facts, um, making things up, saying that he was handling everything right, but actions speak louder than words. Um, and then I respond. I'm like, listen, no, you didn't. And he's like, you know what? Let's talk on the phone. We talk on the phone. And first thing this man says to me, so he's like, so you're quitting? Because according to the video, I guess you're quitting. I didn't know you were quitting. I'm like, what do you expect someone to do when you literally don't respond for a week or two at a time? What do you expect when, when the last message you told me was like, yeah, there might be, there might have to be some tough decisions to be made. And then when I respond to that, you don't respond to me for like a week or two. What do you expect someone to just wait, wait for a response? Should I just like not look for a job? You can't just leave people Un <laughs> unemployed. You can't just leave people with no information and expect them to be just blindly loyal to you for no reason. You have given me no reason to be loyal to you. So he's like, please clarify that you're quitting just for my records. I'm like, okay, I, I quit. Like, what, what does this do? I mean, whatever. 
So we go ahead and discuss what's going to be done with the IP, which is like um, the the code that I wrote. And he's like, all right, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to, you're going to send me the code and I'll pay you the money. And technically, before you start typing, I know I'm supposed to demand my money first before, you know, um, sending the code. But I'm just like, this man has access to it. The only thing is he literally does, just doesn't know how to work GitHub. Like he's been on GitHub. He's a, he's an administrator on the GitHub, but for some reason he needs me to send him the code when it's right there. Um, he already has access to it. So I do the kind thing <laughs> and give him three ways to uh, get this. I said, you could clone the GitHub. You could, um, have me send you a file or you could just download the zip file from the GitHub repo. That's it. Right. And send me my money. We're done. Right. And <laughs> while mid talking, he's like, so how much do you think you're owed? I'm like, I'm owed my salary for this month. And he's like, well, actually there was statutory pay. And I'm like, I, as soon as he says that I'm, I'm rolling my eyes. So for those of you guys who don't know in this situation, statutory pay is basically just getting paid to be on, you know, to be an employee. Like you just like nothing got done for that time period, but you're just getting paid. So for example, um, you know, you, you get sick leave or whatever. You're not, you're not doing anything, but you're getting paid regardless, right? So in September, if you guys remember from the last video, I got paid a certain amount of my salary, like a certain portion of my salary for statutory pay because whatever was going on, I was like, okay, fine. He's saying that we had a whole new conversation and agreement about a new statutory pay, which never happened, by the way. In my memory, never happened. I looked through our emails, our text messages. I remember something from September. That's fine. We had a whole discussion. We had no new statutory pay agreements. And I'm like, hey, I don't see that in our messages or anywhere. I don't remember us ever discussing that. Please send me that information if you have. He was like, yeah, I'll send you that information after I have the IP. I'm like, why not just send it now to prove your point? You have, you're literally doing nothing in this time. So I tell him by the end of the conversation, I'm like, all right, well, once you find that stuff, please send it to me because I'm expecting my full salary for this month, you know, um, for this given month. And <laughs> so that so that happens. And, you know, I, I honestly left the conversation feeling like, you know, we handled stuff. Things were productive for once. Like I was just like, hey, I have this stuff. Cool. As a side note, we were working with Flutter when I first, first started. We were working with Flutter, right? And then we switched over to just strictly Swift, right? And that was like eight months ago. Six, I don't know the math, right? It was like around May. It's December now when this is this conversation is happening. So that was way back then. We talked about it. Cool. I switched to Swift, redid everything, learned Swift from scratch, redid the whole app from scratch. We never once brought up Flutter. So I guess my mistake, my mistake was um, deleting the GitHub for the Flutter code because I was just like, we're not touching this, we're not using this, which is, I don't know why I did that. Maybe because I was just too lazy to rename <laughs> the GitHub. <laughs> I don't know, but whatever. I deleted it. So he brings it up. So he's like, where's the Flutter code? I'm like, I don't know. It's gone. Like, I don't have it. And then he starts going on this, you know, talk about why would I delete it? And I'm like, bro, because we said it was literally useless code to us. And you have not brought this up in like eight months. Like, why, why does it matter now? <laughs> Apparently it did, because this is going to be a scapegoat for trying not to not pay me. He's like, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Time goes on. <laughs> uh, time goes on. And I'm like, Hmm. I don't have the GitHub repo, but I know I have that code somewhere. So I find my old dusty laptop. I look through it and the Flutter code is right there. So I'm covered on that end. Anyways, after this conversation, I send him, I literally, he could have done this himself, by the way. <laughs> I go on GitHub, I download the, the zip file for the code and I send it to him. Keep in mind, he has access to the GitHub. He could do this himself. He could literally do all of this himself. But I'm like, you know what? I have time to waste. I'm unemployed, you know? So I, I, and again, I was just going through this nonchalant because I just automatically, I just know this man is going to come up with a new reason to not want to pay me. You know, um, for example, if you thought that it was statutory pay that you owed me, why do I have to bring this up? If you thought there was statutory pay that you owed me, why am I bringing this up? Like, why have you not paid me? You know, like it's way past my payment date. Like if everything is fine, everything is fixed based off your screenshots or whatever, like why are you not sending me my statutory pay. So anyway, send him the zip file. He was like, okay, I'll look at this when I get home and examine it. I'm like, examine it for what? 
Like, just get home and access it, and you see that it's there, right? That day goes by. I get no message from him for when he gets home that night. Another day goes by, nothing. Another day, I message him, no response. And then I think another day goes by, then I message him again. I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, oh, I couldn't download the zip file. I'm like, how do you not... Your computer basically does that for you. Like, why did you not tell me that? You know, my thing is every time there's a problem, this man does not reach out to you to let you know as a leader should. You have to reach out to him and he'll get back to you when he can't. Keep in mind, he still demands or wants the same respect as a leader who actually handles his stuff, you know? So every time there's a problem, so this situation, I'm like, please, like, if you run into an issue, let me know. I'm trying to get this done by this day so it could just be done and over. He's like, yeah, same. But Every chance he got to delay paying me, he took. Uh, <laughs> so that situation happened. And, you know, he's like, I'm going to examine the code. I'm like, what What do you need to examine? This is literally the code base that I was working off of. What do you need to do? He's like, oh, I got to check. He wants to check for how clean the code is. I think that was one of the reasons. And another reason he wants to check for bugs. I'm like, I don't care how clean the code is. I don't care how many bugs it is. Like, it doesn't matter because it's still work. <laughs> like, not there's no programmer out there who's written code with zero bugs and c completely clean code. Like, if that's what you're trying to justify for paying me, that makes no sense. I'm, and I tell him this. I'm like, dude, you. it, it makes no sense. It, it has nothing to do with the fact that I've done work for you and you haven't paid me. But for some reason, all of a sudden, this is a requirement. And in no situation in any world do I have to write clean code to get paid. Imagine if you were to do a job and then the people are like, you know what? The code works, but it's not as clean as I want. And you know what the worst part about this situation? This man doesn't know how to code. He's not a technical founder or anything like that. So what reviews are you doing? Who's doing these reviews for you? Are you just going to get an opinion and be like, yeah, that's a bad line of code. I'm going to knock off $100 off his paycheck. That makes no sense. <laughs> so <laughs> I was trying to be patient about this situation. And I'm just like, dude, you're going to either man up and just pay me or you're not. Just say that right now so I stop wasting my time. You have the code. It's literally everywhere. It's, I don't know what else I could do for you to stop delaying this process. Then he goes on and tells me, he basically says something. This is paraphrasing. I can't remember it cl clearly. It's been like a week or two. Um, he paraphrased. This is me paraphrasing. Don't sue me yet. Um, saying something basically like, if you want to get paid, then you're going to wait or otherwise you're not going to get paid at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I was just pushing, I was pushing like, bro, you've been delaying, delaying, delaying. So I've just finally said something and he was like, you're either going to get paid or not get paid at all. So be patient. You know, I'm just like, what is there to be patient about? Answered my questions. They, you have, I would write a, I would write a whole message literally explaining why something makes no sense. You skip over it and just be like, yeah, I'm going to say what I want. And completely ignore the facts this man is speaking <laughs> that was such a this whole situation just going back like how can a grown human act like this and just think they're right no matter what <sighs> so this is when things get interesting and what once he says that i'm like did you do you understand what you just said to me you literally just told me that you're not going to pay me because you just just decide to not feel like it it makes no sense um because before you were telling me you want to pay me because you're, you're not trying to, you know, run from paying me. You care about paying me. Now, all of a sudden, hey, if I don't feel like paying you, I won't pay you. Um, then he goes on. I'm just like, be a man. Pay me how my contract says. That's what I say. I say, pay me how my contract says and call it a day so it could be done. If you don't want to do that, just say that, you know fine. The most I do is get to make another YouTube video about the situation, you know, but if you want to be cheap, if you want to like be like slimy and not handle your business, that's fine. Just own up to that. If you want to be slimy, own up to that. If you want to be a bad leader, just own up to that. Don't keep lying to yourself like you're doing a good job because you're not. Um, and he goes on and, you know, says, you know what? I was willing to handle this, but you're professional. You're not, you're not acting professional right now. Like, what part of me isn't acting professional by handling the... You said, send the code, you'll send the money. 
handle that. You know, I've had a professional when, you know, you're dealing with your stuff. I trusted you as a leader as I, you know, I tried to. And I'm not acting professional. Is it because I'm calling you out on your stuff? Like you want people to suck up to you and call you a great leader when you're literally not doing anything to earn that type of respect or and earn that type of admiration. Like, I don't understand that. You're not a good leader. Um, so at this point, he's basically just um, saying that, you know, he's going to delay paying me because blah, blah, blah. And he's like, you know what? Since you want to go by contract, fine, let's go by contract. How many hours did you work that you deserve to get paid for? I'm like, it don't matter how many hours I work because guess what, buddy? Salary salary. And when you tell me you're going to pay me for the next month, pay me my salary. Cause you never once asked me, Hey Larry, how many hours extra did you work over the weekend when I didn't ask you to, you never once asked me, Hey, how many hours did you work? You know, on Monday, you never asked me to keep time of, tr you never asked me to track time in any way. Cause guess what? I'm paid salary. A salary job is not the same as an hourly job. Yes. No matter what amount your salary is, you could always break it down to whatever hourly amount, right? That is correct. But we're doing a salary job. As developers might know, sometimes you might have to stay extra for, sometimes you might have to stay a couple extra hours of work. Doesn't matter. Your job doesn't pay you more for that because you are paid a salary. And that's what I was talking about. It was like, so this man is not only not understanding the contract that he wrote and sent, <laughs> Um, I don't know if he wrote it, but he's not understanding his own company's contract on how I'm supposed to be paid. I even double check this till this moment. I am not afraid of being wrong. If I'm completely wrong about this situation, fine. You know, um, I'll take up, I'll own up to it. I'll own up to it. And that's fine. I don't, what do I lose if I'm wrong? If I'm wrong, then I admit that I'm wrong and I misunderstood something big deal. You grow up, you move on. That's how being wrong works. But this man was not willing to be wrong. So I went over my contract again. I looked for this statutory pay stuff. No evidence of anything about any hourly pay or anything like that, you know? <sighs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so when he says this, I just laugh. And then he says, you know what? I'm, we're going to get lawyers involved. And I just roll my eyes. I'm like, really? Really? My question is, how are you going to pay a lawyer if you can't even pay me? I'm just, I'm just curious how that's going to work. Two, what are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell them? Oh, hey, yeah, there's this one time I delayed his payment and without telling him, there's this one time, there's a whole month I didn't pay him. Here's a contract that we signed about a salary, but hey, is there a way we could finesse this? Like, bro, what are you going to tell them to justify your actions? I have messages. I have it. And if you delete your messages, that shows even more that you're having, you're trying to hide something, man. Like there's nothing you can do. What do you, when you walk into a lawyer's office and you explain the situation to them, what are you going to tell them to justify trying to sue me for anything? So he says, he's going to try to get me for the missing flutter code. Right. And he's like, no matter what you're going to get paid, but it's going to be minus what we paid you for the flutter code. So, <laughs> Basically, I'll have negative amount, which is what I will owe them. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, really? Really? And at this point, I had forgotten that I found the Flutter code. But at the, by the end of this conversation, I told him, hey, found the Flutter code. And then he kept saying lawyers will be in touch. And I was like, really? Really? Are, are they going to be in touch? And I was just, I was literally sending laughing emojis. I was not disrespecting this man. I was just laughing at the whole time. And he kept talking about respect. And I'm talking about this. I'm like, bro, you do not demand any, you like, you can't demand any type of respect from anyone if you act like this. There's no, I don't know what to tell you. There's nothing you could do to demand respect from anyone. So this happens. Um, then finishes off with, hey, good luck with your YouTube and then says something along the lines of basically careful what you say, because you know, now he is lawyer. So I was like, Oh, you're threatening me with lawyers. Ha ha ha. And like, that's how I laughed at him. And he was like, I don't have time to threaten people. You obviously don't have time to pay people either. I'm not understanding what you have time for. Anywho, 
do I still want to work for startups? Yes, I do. After all this stuff, I do because I feel like it was a great learning experience in terms of being a programmer and handling, you know, timelines and coding and stuff. But next time I encounter the, any type of weird situation like this, I for sure will not, will not be dealing with it the same way I've dealt with it now. Like I'd for sure, like any, as soon as I, I get a hint of someone being slimy in any type of way, I'm out. You know, and there's no shame in that. I am out. Oh, God. A part of me doesn't even want to edit this video, man. A part of me just wants to ramble, shoot, and be done. You know what I'm saying? But um, <laughs> that's that for my story. I appreciate y'all watching, man. Um, life is life. I, 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 I had a good time learning, but I am now unemployed. So if you're hiring, please go ahead. And that's that. So I guess my advice to anyone who's watching this and is kind of cringing in this situation, all I would say is just like, if you're going to work for someone, make sure that if you're going to work for a startup, make sure that the leadership is great. Um, there's some great leaders out there. There's some great leaders who, if they're going through financial problems with the startup, will update you ahead of time and not last last moment. You know, like it's rare, but there those people are out there. Don't let this type of story like make you fearful of, you know, working for startups or anything like that because i think it's a great learning experience strictly as a programmer and and you know in a professional setting unfortunately for me that's the downside but you know it was worth the long term no it wasn't i could have made more money somewhere else anyways uh <laughs> thank you so much for watching please make sure to like subscribe i appreciate y'all so much and you know there's nothing more to be said i'm just rambling at this point thank you peace